In 2007, police found the body of Karen Bodine, mother of three, murdered and dumped on the side of the road in Tumwater. 13 years later, the case remains unsolved, but thanks to the persistence of her kids, there may be new leads. Scene of the Crime podcasters Carolyn Osorio and Kim Shepard take a look at the case. Karen Bodine never did stray far from home. Even after she was grown and had three children of her own. Karen Bodine was a loving mother of three. And I have to say that because the way that the news reports report on her murder, it really upset the family. So she was a very much cherished and loved member of the Bodine family. She was in crisis in January in 2007. And so she was, had gotten in a fight with her boyfriend. It was a domestic violence fight and she got kicked out of her apartment. And so she basically went and kind of hung out with some rough people over the weekend. And they ended up finding her body near a gravel quarry pit that Monday in 2007. Well, that's so sad. So why uh, the decision to cover it now in your podcast? Carly, Karen's now adult daughter, reached out to us and she has been trying to find out who did this to her mother. She was basically a senior in high school when she found out what happened and she has never stopped even putting her own public safety at risk. And so she reached out to Kim and I and said, please, can you help me not only tell the story of what happened to my mother, but reclaim her name, that she was a mother, she was a daughter, she was a friend. And that kind of has gotten lost over the years and particularly after the murder happened. And you think that is because of the way the story was told originally or why was there not more interest? It was a difficult case in part because Karen was in a rough crowd the weekend before her murder. And so a lot of the witnesses didn't have the clearest memories of what had happened that weekend. So it was a tough case to solve. That didn't help. Also, the detective who was on the case was about to retire. And then we had these news reports who said a drug addict and transient had been dumped. It just fell off the radar because it just seemed like the community didn't care. So at this point, do we know, are there any new suspects? Is there any new <laughs> evidence? Well, there is some evidence that was collected in 2007. There were several samples of DNA that were taken off of Karen's body. And uh, the medical examiner now that the state, actually crime lab, is trying to pull those DNA strands apart so they can figure out the individuals who might have been behind them and then hopefully connect that DNA with whoever was behind the murder. What's interesting about this case is when we were interviewing Detective Hamilton, who is now in charge of the case, he's not even assigned to the case. He started as a patrol man and he basically would go past this, this site where they had dumped her body and he just, it never left his mind. Like we need to solve this case. And so he picked it up and a really great turn of events in, the, in 2019, Karen's case was uh, submitted as part of the crowd solve. So that's where citizen sleuths come together with seasoned detectives and then also experts in the field. And they took a look at the case. Now, an unfortunate part about that is that I, when I was talking to Detective Hamilton or we were talking to him, I said, hey, I'm surprised crowd solve didn't offer to pay for this extra genetic testing to separate these DNA samples, you know, because this could be the, the linchpin that could solve this case. And it was a question of equity. You know, it brings into question, is it fair to have this case get put basically to the front of the line because somebody has deep pockets to pay for it? And, you know, Kim and I, have, we talked extensively about that in our podcast about, you know, we want equity, but then you've got this family who's just pining to find the answer of what happened to this beloved mother. And now Karen's mother is now taking, you know, her health has kind of taken a turn for the worse, which is really made Carly much more passion to solve this case. And it sounds like you guys are both very passionate about this. And I know you cover other crimes and mysteries. So, I mean, when you get so personally involved, do you have your own theories? Oh yeah, I mean, there are several persons of interest in this case, and I think we have some pretty strong ideas who might've been behind it, but we just need that little bit more evidence. And as the detective was saying, he thinks we're really close to solving this case, which is part of the reason he also wants to get it back out in the media, because he says, we just need one or two tips from the public and this thing will be solved. They have a lot of information, they just need to connect a few of those dots. But I think 
for us, the reason that we're feeling so passionate about it is because it's about a bigger message that when there is someone in crisis, the community needs to make sure to take care of that person. And in this case, there actually was a police officer who stopped the day before Karen was murdered and asked her if she needed any help. She said no. And she told the police officer, you know, you can go ahead. I'm, I'm okay. But I wonder if, you know, there couldn't have been more done. A lot of people in crisis don't want to admit that they're in crisis. They don't want to ask for help. Maybe if the officer had been a little more persistent, maybe if he'd offered her information or the address of a women's shelter, not just asked her to get in his car, maybe there could have been a different outcome. You know, it's really hard to doubt anybody's actions on that weekend. I think the officer did everything he thought he could do in this situation. But I think it's a, it's a conversation that we need to have as a community about what can we do to better support folks who are in crisis. Well, that's a great point. What do you hope to accomplish again? I mean, obviously to solve the case, but what specifically from having it on your podcast? When we worked in the newsroom, so as reporters, so oftentimes the breaking news happens, you hear about a story or a case, and then it just falls off the cliff because especially nowadays, there's so many breaking stories. And it's like, what happened to those people? What happened to those families? Why? Try to understand that. So part of the podcast was to go deeper into those stories that you don't get the time to find out what happened. We always hoped that we would be able to help solve a cold case, at least play some part in it if we could. But it's a really delicate, respectful situation where some victims' families, they want their privacy. They don't want to hear about it. We totally respect that. In this case, Carly came to us. Her and I have been talking, you know, every day, and she's so grateful. Now, this is 13 years after her mother was murdered. She is trying to get a billboard, the spot where that police officer last saw her and asked her for help to get bring attention to this story. So really, with this particular case, it's Carly's passion. And if we can in any way bring attention to it, you know, that's what we want to do and tell her story. She wasn't the way that the news report said in the beginning. She was a very beloved family member. And again, I think that goes to a broader topic of how do we treat people with addiction issues in our society? Yes, she had addiction issues since she was a teenager. She fought that addiction on and off throughout her life, but that didn't mean she wasn't a loving mom and that she didn't do her best and try. So should we just forget about her because she had an addiction issue? Obviously not. Anyone with information on this case is asked to call the Thurston County Sheriff's Department at the number you see there. The family is offering a $50,000 reward. Details are on our website.